seniors and colleagues uh myself dr ashish thakur and today i'm going to talk on a a bit lengthy topic where can a routine standard hip go wrong and the practical tips to avoid it so the total hip arthi arthroplasty complication work group prepared a list of complications which was endorsed by the hip society these complications are bleeding wound complications and various others 18 complications which we will discuss further so any occurrence of a complication in a routine thr is a result of chain of events which can start during the preoperative phase and can involve any of the processes during and after surgery there are different variables which act over here and they can be divided into patient specific ot specific and the most important surgeon specific sorry preoperative optimization and assessment is the most important step in thr or for math matter any other surgeries you have to follow all the guidelines to make your patient fit for the surgery and if you miss any of these it may lead to increased chances of complications like surgical site infections pgis and rehospitalizations another important aspect is technical preparation so if you miss something in history and physical examination like a previous surgery or scar previous fracture or associate comorbidities it can unnecessarily increase your post operative complication rate likewise templating and a proper planning of the surgery helps you in avoiding the complications like limb and discrepancies wrong offsets and others so one of the most dreadful complication in any joint replacement surgery is infection again this is mostly a multifactorial event and the incidence rises due to missing perioperative antibiotics non regulated ot traffic not maintaining these important parameters like hb1c albumin and anemia smokers obviously have the high risk of infections proper draping and changing gloves after draping is important body exhaust systems and surgical hood systems along with laminar flows are the things which help in reducing the risk of infection now we come to pre -op intraoperative factors and cup positioning plays a vital role in the stability of tha proper positioning of patient and exposure is the main stay to get a good position of cup during posterior approach there is usually forward tilt of pelvis because of the forced anterior retraction of femur causing acetabulum cup to be placed in retroversion this can be avoided by a proper stable patient fixed in the operation table patients with spino pelvic imbalance as just told by dr natesan in particular may require cup positioning outside of the levonic zone to achieve hip stability so keeping them in mind during your pre op evaluation will avoid any complications so the current how to put the correct cup placement always try to follow more than one point of reference for cup positioning first would be a tal the cup should be parallel and just superior to tal there are instrumentations provided by company for cup placement but these are subject to different variables and hence cannot be totally dependent upon another check point would be to keep the cup flush or slightly tuck into the anterior wall and flush or slightly prominent on the posterior wall so as this is an another thing which you can use for a cup positioning so as we can see over here uh, after getting an exposure you can see this is the tal this is how you basically visualize as nicely shown by dr bose just now and this is how your cup should be placed superior and parallel to it femoral component antiversion another aspect which needs to be taken care of and it should be in the range of 5 to 15 degrees or the combined antiversion has a range of 25 to 50 but it can be anywhere between 30 to 40 degrees impingement another problem soas impingement is another uh, complication which can occur due to improper cup placement intraoperatively ensuring that the acetabular cup is not proud and avoiding excessive dissection around the tendon aids in reducing the risk of injury liner selection affects impingement in tha offset liners and lip liners reduce range of motion with subsequent impingement of the femoral implant on the liner now limb and discrepancy i mean it's a problem which everyone of some some everyone has to face can occur due to these three or four reasons insufficient neck resection prosthesis with long neck inferior displacement of center of rotation of acetabulum and derange uh, femoral offset the risk of limb length discrepancy due to insufficient neck resection can be minimized by a combination of careful pre operative planning and operative technique normally 1 to 2 cm above lesser trochanter is the level of neck cut but it can vary and hence templating is important intra operative checking of the limb length is another very important thing has to be done you can check the levels of lower pole of patella and heels of both the limbs Another method is Ranavat method of putting pin below the infracotyloid uh, groove and measuring it from the GT. Uh, prosthesis with long neck can cause limb lengthening. In such cases, just changing to a prosthesis with a smaller neck can suffice. 
Now, placement of acetabular cup below the level of teardrop can lead to inferior displacement of a uh, center of rotation. This can again be avoided by proper exposure, finding the floor of acetabulum through my, uh, and true medial wall. Templating again has a role to play in this. Uh, femoral offset, if it has been reduced and is not appreciated at surgery, we inadvertently do over lengthening of the limb. This can be very well avoided by preoperative planting, uh, templating uh, along with a proper intraoperative technique, like keeping pyriformis fossa as a landmark for entry into the canal and placing the canal finder flush to the lateral cortex. I mean, you can avoid achieve lateralization and a good offset with it. Modular neck offsets are there to be used for the deformed femurs and deformities. Abductor injury, another problem seen mostly with anterolateral approach, can lead to gait changes and prolonged weakness of the abductor mechanism. You can avoid this in posterior approach by properly uh, retracting gluteus minimus from the uh, joint capsule. So dislocation in a normal THRA results because of these issues in combination or isolation. Your cup position, femoral offset, impingement, abductor insufficiency, femoral antiversion and some role of approach can be said over there. Fracture, another dreadful combination mostly seen in femur. It is more commonly with elderly patients, rheumatoid, osteoporotic patients and who have cortical defects from previous surgeries. It is commonly associated with uncemented hips and those with direct anterior approaches. Fractures are mostly seen during the dislocation process and can be avoided with the use of excessive force during dislocation and more of capsulotomy along with the soft tissue release. We should also try to remove the osteophytes along the margin of acetabulum. In some patients with intrapelvic protrusion of the acetabulum, the neck can be divided and the head removed from the acetabulum in a piecemeal fashion. Second largest incidence of fracture is seen during broaching and prosthesis implantation, especially cementless stem. This can again be avoided by using flexible rimmers and intraoperative fluoroscopy to safe safely open the canal and create space to broach in patients with tight distal canals. Nerve injury, sciatic nerve sometimes get injured by Chan lays or your uh, intraoperative hematoma which keeps on compressing or can be done uh, can be damaged because of the impingements. It can be avoided by keeping in the mind the anatomy of the sciatic nerve. You can also use serrated edges, I mean uh, a mop over the serrated edges of chan lays or retractors. Uh, another uh, incidence where sciatic nerve gets injured is uh, when a chronically shortened limb is lengthened beyond 2 to 5 centimeters. It increases the risk of sciatic nerve palsy and this can be avoided intraoperatively by constantly palpating the sciatic nerve tightness and soft tissue tightness around the hip. Uh, sometimes extruded semen can also cause injury to the surrounding structures and sciatic nerve. Femoral nerve gets injured especially with anterior or anterior lateral approach. Retractor placement is one major cause along with the procedure of anterior capsulotomy to cause this injury. What we need to do is always place the retractor in the direct visualization and or after palpating the anterior wall. Obturator nerve, it gets commonly injured due to exudate cement or the pressure from screws or retractors in the anterior inferior quadrant. So you just have to avoid <coughs> putting your screws in the anterior inferior uh, quadrant and use posterior superior quadrant for the screw placement. Superior gluteal nerve, it gets injured when you go way above 5 cm from the greater trochanter while uh, doing the retractor, splitting the gluteus medius muscle. It's a rare complication in primary THR vascular injury, but avoiding screw in the quadrants other than posterior superior and posterior inferior to will save iliac and obturator vessels. The measures taken to avoid injury to the femoral nerve also protects the accompanying femoral artery and vein. This is a complication which can lead to pul fatal pulmonary embolism. So using a mechanical and pharmacological modalities as prophylaxis to reduce the incidence is the preferred method. Thank you. Just.